Hi guys, my name is Isabella Green. Welcome to Soul Stream Sessions, where I tell stories from out of this world. Haven't talked about the dragons for a while and haven't seen any for a while. And there we are. This week I had a session with someone who reached out to me and she seemed to be a pretty conservative type of person. Uh, and then when I started looking at her energy field, I observed that there was something in her energy field that looked like a wooden spear or like a huge piece of splintered wood right around her uh, solar plexus area. Uh, as I started looking deeper at that, because it really was very clear, it was just like sticking out of her energy field. And it felt really ancient because the wood looked uh, really, really old. And it's not something that you would see uh, nowadays because it looked like an ancient piece of a weapon or something. And it had a lot of energy of uh, disappointment, injustice and betrayal all around it. We know that thought forms and energy forms uh, sometimes can follow a person from incarnation to incarnation, from even from the soul stream, the cosmic space, uh, into human reality from one life to the next. And when there is an opening, there is a wound or some sort of a, a traumatic experiences, it leaves an imprint and it allows these energies to kind of accumulate as thought forms and sometimes as entities within uh, that space or around the space of of where the wound or the trauma trauma took place the actual physical uh, trauma took place so i'm looking at that uh, splintered piece of ancient wood and i'm looking at uh, when i'm experiencing these sensations of betrayal and injustice and deep sadness and i'm going and i'm <laughs> Uh, and this is happening during the first part of the session and I really kind of am puzzled but yeah I know that I need to take that out and clear that space uh, but then we go to the next level and uh, I am connecting with her soul stream and I'm observing her as a really happy uh, bubbly dragon if that's even possible I was quite surprised to see that that lady was a dragon uh, but I'm seeing them uh, nice green uh, uh, scales with some gold in them and that dragon is solitary in, in the forest somewhere it's got its cave and it's got uh, a very nice peaceful life it's not something it's kind of like a dragon that's hiding in, in the forest, minding its own business, minding its own life. It's a female dragon and it's not attacking anyone and it's not hurting anyone and it's not doing anything uh, for it to be considered dangerous for the human beings. And it doesn't even seem like there are other human beings out there. So... Uh, and then the next part, and I don't know how long their lifespan was, but uh, next uh, part of that life I'm shown is is the human beings are hunting it down, and then the human beings are able to catch it and or trap it, and they kill it, and they really kill it just out of their own fear and their own non knowing about this being because this being never attacked them, never really caused any trouble for them. I guess it was spotted somewhere and it got, uh, the humans decided that they have to kill it. And the way it's killed is with so something that's much larger than, than a spear, but it is a huge uh, wooden uh, weapon that looks, that's like solid wood and it breaks off and it goes into her stomach or her, her upper abdomen, the solar plexus, um, high enough uh, to damage uh, the heart space there as well and so, and she dies. And the next incarnation of that soul is human. And this time she decides that she wants to, she's attracted to heaven scales. So she goes, next thing I'm seeing is a medieval uh, armor, you know, a, war, uh, 
person who is wearing medieval armor, which kind of in the in the dragon mind reminds them of the scale. It has a muscle and the strength to fight. Uh, because now the dragon decided, all right, now I had peaceful life, it killed me, and so now how about I'll use my power as a human being and have significant skill in battle. And so one incarnation after the next, um, on the battlefield, wearing armor, having strong ability to for fighting and strong ability for battle, and then going... Uh, having a whole bunch of these and then moving uh, farther and farther away from the space of empowerment. So that dragon felt, oh, it felt like she was very empowered. She was very confident. She was very comfortable with herself. She was strong. And then she got killed. And so uh, human incarnations, male, 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 battlefield, 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 and then into female uh, incarnations. And first, powerful female incarnations and then less and less powerful and then the space of complete disempowerment for the uh, female incarnations and then now we have the person here in this reality with a splintered piece of wood in their energy field that is still uh, linked to the sense of uh, loss, sadness, injustice and betrayal and, uh, well, I worked on clearing that for her, and then we get on the phone and we start discussing this. And I uh, have to present it to a very uh, normal, down-to-earth human being, and I said, well, guess what, you were a dragon in past life, and I'm sitting there going, I'm interested in what she's going to say, and all of a sudden she tells me, you know, I loved to play in the woods when I was growing up, and uh, I was always pretending like I was looking for dragons. I was always seeking out uh, the caves and thinking that there'd be a dragon there. I always, in my imaginary life, uh, had something to do with dragons. So, okay, that's clear. And then on the whole part about the... Um, disempowerment from the full power, full, she went full spectrum from complete uh, power to complete disempowerment and she says yeah I feel like this is my my path and I feel like my soul is interested in experiencing everything and that's exactly the feeling that I had it was kind of like more of the curiosity so if I had the full power let me go the at the end of that spectrum the opposite side of that spectrum and complete disempowerment through the incarnations in this incarnation, uh, her uh, the soul has an idea of, of pulling on all of these experiences and then finding the piece of balance, right? Because you went from one, one part of the spectrum to the opposite part of the spectrum and now you have a choice when you know about it. You have a choice to uh, balance yourself to find that centerpiece, that zero point and find the space of balance where there is enough, where there is that uh present the presence of power and the presence of knowing what it is to lose power as well but uh, like the space of an observer of all experiences encompassing all of these experiences and then the last thing about the uh splintered piece of wood in her solar plexus so i asked her uh, about it and she said that she had um stomach pains and digestive concerns her whole life and then also uh, she started telling me about the most recent experience that she had uh, that was very much along the lines of uh, these feelings, the feelings of betrayal and, and injustice and uh, sadness. And uh, these are all old thought forms that she keeps playing or she, I hope that uh, it's all in the past now for her, now that we took out that splintered old weapon out of her stomach. But how interesting is that, that it would be a lingered energetic imprint all the way from the beginning of time, before, before like the pre-human time, the dragon uh, times, and then uh, very early, you know, the very early human history here. And here we are all the way until this day carrying that splintered wood in her energy field and uh, all of the uh, feelings and events and sensations associated with that state of being that she experienced when that first happened. 
All right, so a kind of interesting story I uh, wanted to share with you today. If you'd like to have a session with me, you can reach me at isabellagreen.com. Thank you for tuning in today. I love you. Take care. Namaste.